In this video, I'm excited to share with you the cash flow that I have received over the past month, the month of May, from selling options as well as from collecting dividends in one of the stocks that I own. I think you will see and understand why I like selling options so much. They can generate a consistent monthly cash flow, but you don't have to deal with tenants, with maintenance, with all the headaches that come along with rental management. I'm also going to discuss several trades I've made over the past three days. Some of these are closing out some almost worthless positions on options I sold several weeks ago, and then using that capital to enter new positions, which I'm going to talk about all the companies in detail. I'm going to talk about the strike prices that I sold those puts at, and I'm also going to talk about why I invested in these companies. I'm excited to share this information with you, so let's get started. I am Randy Perez. I'm a 21 plus year real estate investor as well as stock and option trader. And when I trade stocks, I typically trade dividend stocks. I'm excited to share this video with you today to show you, first of all, the cash flows I received last month from trading options as well as receiving a little bit of dividends. If you see here on the screen, we had a lot of trades last month. We have a lot of positions. We keep our position sizes to a minimum. We don't want any position to be over 5% of our portfolio, and many of them are less than that. The net we put in our pocket from option sales here, as you'll see at the bottom, is $7,237. Now we received one little group of dividends in the amount of $354 from Abvi, a pharmaceutical company. So when you figure all the option, net cash that went into our pocket, as well as the dividends, we put in our pocket $7,591. No one can take that cash away from us. It's our cash to keep, to use as we see fit, to reinvest, to go on vacation, to make a house payment, whatever it is, that cash is ours to keep. It's real money. And what it amounts to is an 18.2 annualized cash on cash return using no leverage. We have the cash to buy all of these stocks. We're next going to discuss some trades we've made over the past three days, why we made them, what strike prices we closed, and why we closed out some old positions. To begin with, let's look at the trade we closed out in Dominion Energy. Now, this is a stock that I've been trading for a long time. I had sold some puts back on May the 7th as well as May the 14th, and I got $1.49 for those when I sold them several weeks back. Now, they're only worth $0.10. Cents. And we don't want to wait two and a half weeks to collect $0.10. Cents. So we bought those puts back for $0.10. Cents. And we want to keep this party going. We want to keep that cash flow rolling. So what do we do? Well, I look over my 100 plus stock lists that I watch on a weekly basis. These are all companies that I would love to own them. I'm just waiting on them to come down to prices that I would feel comfortable owning them at. And then I sell options in those companies. So that's what we've done here. What stuck out to me was JP Morgan Chase. It's sitting there looking like it might be ready to take off. Now there are no guarantees but the company, I feel like it's a very solid company and the chart looks very good. Well, with the freed up cash from closing out Dominion Energy, we sold some puts in JP Morgan Chase. It's one of the world's oldest banks. Its roots go back to the year 1799. Today, it's the largest bank in the US. It has over 5,100 branches, 16,000 ATMs, and 2.6 trillion in assets. It operates in over 100 markets. 80% of its revenue comes from here in the U.S. But its income is well diversified. It's made up of consumer and community banking, of corporate and investment banking, of asset and wealth management, as well as commercial banking. J.P. Morgan's is a very efficient company. Its efficiency ratio, which is the operating cost divided by the revenues, its efficiency ratio in return, they lead the industry. It's the highest quality bank in America, in my opinion. It's a very conservative bank, but it is a bank. So if you invest in JP Morgan, you need to understand the risk. You want to watch your position sizing and you want to do your own research on the stock. Don't just take my word for it. Do your own research. Now, the actual trade you can see here on the screen, I sold one position three days ago. Now the stock is down a little bit lower. And so I went ahead and entered a full position by selling another option. So I collected on average $1.87 per share. I sold the July 19, $85 puts. On the daily chart, we see the stock is right above the 50-day moving average. And on the weekly chart, it's bumping up against the 200-week moving average. 
So there's good support in the 87 and a half price range. And with this trade, we're able to produce a 17.9% cash on cash annualized return. Now our next trade is Tyson Foods. Now Tyson Foods is the largest U.S. producer of processed chicken and beef. And they also produce a lot of processed pork and protein-based products. And these are under brands that no doubt we're familiar with. Man, we eat them or see them on TV. Jimmy Dean, Hillshire Farm, Ballpark, Sara Lee, just to name a couple of them. Tyson Foods sells 90% of its products in the U.S. and 10% of the revenue comes from places like Canada, Mexico, Brazil, Europe, China, and Japan. It has a solid cash payout ratio that it uses to pay its dividends. And I expect to see a double digit growth over the next 10 years. The stock price has come up from where it was when I first started trading it several months ago, but it's still well off the highs of the stock and it looks to be forming a nice base for $55 to $60 price range. Now back on May the 7th, I sold the June 50 puts and I got $1.05 for those puts. Now those puts are only worth 11 cents. We still have two and a half weeks left in the options, so we bought those back. We don't want to sit there and, and wait two and a half weeks to make 11 cents. And we sold the July 57 and a half puts and received a dollar and 30 cents per share in our pocket cash right away. What does that amount to? Was well, a 16.9% cash on cash annualized unleveraged return. Finally, Duke Energy. This is a stock that I've been trading for a long time. And I had some put positions that I had sold back on May the 1st. They were now they're only worth 10 cents. So I bought them back to free up that money. We sold new puts in a position of a stock that we had a half size in already, Honeywell International, ticker symbol H-O-N. And this is an industrial company. This company, its roots go all the way back to 1885. It's a conglomerate that expands over the entire globe. They have four main segments, aerospace, building technologies, performance materials and technologies, and safety and productivity solutions. Now they've added a focus in their business to the energy sector. And who uses this? Well, the US Defense Department, e-commerce, and even energy industries, they all use this segment. It's such a large segment that Honeywell actually has 11,000 engineers working on their software. So a huge part of their, their company. Because of this focus on software engineering, we see strong and sustainable growth in this company. We expect high single digit dividend increases over the next several years. We feel like they're well positioned to benefit from the important economic trends of the future. They have a nice reoccurring revenue streams. And I like to own a company that has reoccurring revenue streams. It's, it's kind of like owning a piece, a little small piece of a huge ATM machine. I like these companies that generate reoccurring revenue. There's a prospect of about a 10% annual dividend growth long term, in my opinion. So it's a company that I love. It's a company that I already own in my retirement account. And I just started trading it in my main trading account here in the past several months. So with Duke Worthless, I sold a new put in Honeywell, the July 17, $135 strike puts. And I got $3.35 per share for those options. You see here why I chose to sell the 135 strike puts. And the chart, it looks really good. Honeywell is trading above the 50-day moving average. And on the weekly chart, we see that it has now settled above the 200-day moving average. So there's really nice support here in this stock around the 140 strike price range. But check out this return. So we received $3.35 per share for selling these options. It cost us 10 cents to buy back the Duke options. We net in our pocket $3.25 for potentially 45 days. And more than likely, as you see here, we won't hold it 45 days because they'll get to be worth not much money and we'll buy it back. But let's just say worst case scenario, what's our return? Well, that's 19.5% cash on cash, annualized unleveraged return in a very solid company that I would love to own in this account. So as you can see, we're receiving awesome returns from very strong companies, companies that I love what they do, what they do for for the people that buy those products. They produce products and perform services that people need, they have to have them. And we're able to generate an over 18% on average cash on cash return from the trades that I showed you today. I'm happy to trade these companies. I'd be happy if they gotten signed and put into my account. 
then I could keep that put premium and I could sell call options against the positions as well as start receiving those dividends. If you found value in this video, please hit the subscribe button as well as the little notification bell. That way you get a notice every time we produce a new video. It is important that you do your own research on your stocks. I'm simply sharing my journey here and I hope it benefits you. But please do your own research. Don't take my word for any of these companies. So until next time, happy investing and we'll see you again soon.